looks like we have mainstream media for the first time coming into the protest grounds and interviewing people, which is really, really encouraging. Showing an interest in wanting to have dialogue yeah, with protesters. Yeah, we need more people like him to come down and speak to us, really, yeah. For the first time in my life being misrepresented by the media, was a lived experience and it was confronting. Anybody who wants to come down here and meet, we're happy to talk to them and we'll talk rationally about what's going on. Thank we you. would like this to, or we, we would like to go home. We really would. Well, like you to could go move the cars but and continue protesting. But this reporter, she came in and she came in with a very clear uh, goal, and that was to provoke. No, I don't read at all. I don't read at all. Are you a trained medical professional? I'm an intensive care paramedic. Are the paramedics in above registered? Yeah. Yeah. This is about an anti-mandate. Yeah? Are you care? Mandate. That's actually my own medical confidentiality. I think it's really rude you're asking other people for their medical information. But the Prime Minister has said that your demands are impossible to meet because we're going through a Omicron wave. Look, we're going through Omicron right now, but my mum's got cancer. And this Omicron wave is one thing, but these people's lives are getting ruined. No jobs, no food, no school, their kids are crying, can't play sport. You know, Omicron is just one part of our life. What about the rest of our lives? It was quite clear that the mainstream media weren't working out who was actually in here and why. So, Sean Plunkett um, commissioned a survey with uh, Curios, went fully through the occupation scientifically and systematically to talk to, talk to everyone. And the result of that survey was that the age group was quite high, averaged about 55. It was 55% female. The skew of politics, 46% were Labour and Greens. Uh, the ethnic makeup was 30% Maori something like 75 to 80 percent unvaccinated. The, the biggest thing about it was it was all anti-mandate pro-freedom. I knew that something was going on wrong when you started laying down the law. I can't move my hands, I break out in sweat, I want to cry, can't take it anymore. They just smeared us completely, calling us fascist, Nazi, white, conspiracy, anti-mouldy, anti-mouldy, white, Nazi, far-right. They would set us up and gaslight us, would respond in love and unity, and then they'd go on anyway to report as though we were scum. But this has got to stop, enough is enough I can't take this BS any longer It's gone far enough, you want to claim my soul You'll have to come and break down this door One of the strengths of our village was the diversity because there were so many different perspectives being shared and stories and values and beliefs and faiths it was all on stage and there was stuff that wasn't resonating with everybody and we learnt to be more tolerant of New Zealanders, which is what our government and media are telling us not to do. It's like the utopia of what I would see in heaven. Like, I'm being, I'm being honest, like, and they were all there for one common goal, and that was for our freedom and for our children. My kids, what's left for them? Then what's coming down the road? The light in the tunnel could be the south by Well, train. I've just come down from Auckland, oh, so I thought I'd actually just pop in and see what was going on because what we're hearing in the news is that it's pretty like aggro and there's, there's a lot of um, different ideas, but the vibe is just really good. I, I'm blown away. I've never seen anything like this before. Somebody needs to listen to them because they're not going to shut up anytime soon, that's for sure. And I'm really pleased I came down to see what it's really like. The truth, actually. 